Not gonna go there. Not gonna oh, go there. I no. actually was not. I was gonna say something else. It was we... gonna be like ghouls and spooks, mm-hmm. but then I realized what it was going to sound like, and I'm not gonna, not gonna do that. We all believe you. I'm not gonna do that. We all believe. I you. really did. That was an honest mistake. Truly, I I, I kid you not. Uh huh. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't gonna do that. Sure. Listen, I'm new to this whole opening sure. the show thing. What? You're new to it. You've been doing it for over 100 episodes. <laughs> we can say that I now. I know. Yes. Bing. Triple digits. Yeah. We're old now. Are we? Are we We're old news? Old. Are We're we old, old hat? Old hat. Old Just a bit. Hat. Just a bit of old hat. Yes. Yeah. Don't sound like it, but we are. I mean, sometimes it does sound like a girl. Let's be real. Sometimes it just, sometimes it does. Sometimes. Sometimes it do. And sometimes it, like it that. don't. Speaking uh, of bees, did you hear about the fucking murder bees? Murder hornets. Murder hornets. Murder hornets. Yeah, yeah they've uh, they've made their way here to mm-hmm. the, to the states in the in the next chapter of the apocalypse. Uh huh. Um, I think Christy said something about uh, apocalypse bingo, like how she has apocalypse bingo now. Um, oh, so yeah. that's great. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, perfect. I actually watched a video of someone purposefully uh, stinging themselves. With a murder hornet. With the murder hornet. Now, why? Why would you? Why well, would you it, it do was, that? he was a professional, supposed. Why was he do pro- professional? What? He was like a wannabe Steve Irwin. Uh huh. Um, and I guess he was just trying to uh, be educational. I guess, but had one stung himself with it. I have never heard some anyone scream <laughs> quite so horribly. Um, it was awful. He was like, it is, he was yelling that like, it is burning. It was burning through him is how he described it. I mean, like a burning, searing pain. Does it just hurt really bad or does it actually kill you? Um, I think it can. not I'm pretty sure it can kill you. I I mean, I don't know, but I mean, they're murder bees. I'm sure. I I know they rip the fucking heads off honeybees though. I know that. They're murder hornets. We like bees. We protect the bees. We enjoy the bees. The bees are our pollinators. We need them. Hornets do exactly none of that work. Yes. And they're just fucking assholes to everybody. Bees, don't don't besmirch the bees. Well, they attack the bees and apparently rip their heads off. I mean, like the fucking bees needed any like more. I think this is the bees version of the apocalypse, right? Like the fucking bees needed to catch shit from anywhere else, man. They are just struggling as it is. We're fucking demolishing all their fucking plants and putting out all this shit to kill them. Mm-hmm. We need bees. Yes, we do. We love the bees. Save the bees. Yes. Bees are the knees. Yeah. Build um, bee homes. It's good. It's a good thing. Google it. Bee homes. Do that. Yeah. And fuck murder hornets. It's not going to be good. No, yeah, I heard uh, that you can't even, like, regular, like, protective equipment. Like, it don't work. What state are they in? Washington. Hmm. So they're up there with a few of our um, listeners. Car- carve it off. <laughs> you know, there's a fault just line carve it over off. there somewhere. Just kind of. I think that, yeah, it's like right over there. There's that and then, like, Alaska, right? But, mm-hmm. like, just send it away. Turn it into the new Hawaii. Yeah. Bring Hawaii I'm up. I'm sure Washington would enjoy being an island. <laughs> Bring Hawaii up, put it in its place. I don't think it'll fit, but we it can work it, it out. It will be like a weird thing. Um, and then just send Washington State out on its own for a minute. Let them, like, get themselves sorted. Work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Microsoft can find a uh, solution for them. Yeah. Well, anyway, in better news, um, we have two new invocations to do this week i can't believe it honestly me either like still every time i get that we get that little notification in our email which comes to our phones and it pops up and there's like a really uh cute little like what do they put don't they put like a little like, like the little party thing the party the emoji, emoji. and yeah, it's like it's woo. Good. 
The new, cornucopia of plenty. Yeah. For those of you who know what that is. <laughs> new X Ooh. amount of. Wow, that's <laughs> some ASMR for that you. That candle said. Uh, yeah, still, still shocked, but we love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, we really appreciate you guys supporting the show, especially at a crucial time like this. I hope nobody is like. I hope that every we we are always very appreciative of all of the support that we get from our folks on Patreon. But I just hope that everybody is also taking care of themselves and their families. In addition, I mean, I would hope so. Just take care, take care of yourself, sis, because we certainly don't want anybody going without so that they can support us. Um, but we really appreciate the love. Mm-hmm. We totally. really appreciate it, even here in the final days of the apocalypse. I think we still have some time. Um, the lagoon creatures haven't risen yet, and uh, then I'll be worried. The you lagoon know? creatures? Yes. Yeah. When shit just starts, like, fucking, like, rising From forth the out of the seas, I'm done then. I'm, I'm well, good. Well, okay. Well, all right. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think elemental, because aren't you supposed to have, like, there's got to be some fire. Oh, we did have fire. We had the Australia fires, right? We did. We had fire. Uh, we had the virus, which was brought by, like, air, lungs, right? It's a respiratory Sure, right? sure, Jan. <laughs> Isn't it? No, but it's respiratory. I mean, it is technically sped, spread through droplets, which would be more water, but... But it's still respiratory. Sure, Jan. Otherwise, why are we wearing masks? Go for it. So there's that. You're a scientist. And then <laughs> there's... What's another? Earth. Earthquake. <laughs> Did we have an earthquake? Not oh. yet, but hey, that might solve that Washington problem. <laughs> With the whole murder hornet situation. Oh, shit. Think about Yosemite. Mm. Yeah. Fuck. I really hope that I didn't just, like, bring that upon us, but okay. um. You you gotta, you gotta, we gotta be careful. Um, Anyway, I was trying to talk about good news. (laughs) <laughs> and that just brought us down. We have two new Stay Spooky Squad members to induct into this family here today. Mm-hmm. Bringing them into the fold. Yeah, and it might be crazy times, but it is also time to welcome two new family members. Mm-hmm. And there's no better time than right now to do that. So we're yeah. going to do that right now. I will be invoking Jasmine. And it's just Jasmine. Just jazz. Like Prince, just the one name. Sure, jazz. And I will be invoking Melissa C. All right, ladies, your candles are lit and will burn beside our mic stands through at least the end of the episode, but forever and always in our dark, dark hearts. And as always, as we light your candles, we are sending you good vibes for health, wealth, happiness. We are sending you comfort. We are sending you uh, renewal energy. Especially in a difficult time like what we're facing right now, we hope that you are feeling the love, that you're feeling the connection, because we certainly are, and we love you for it. Mm. Love that. That was great. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was really touching. Mm-hmm. Yes, and if you would like your own invocation, you can head over to our Patreon, see what else we got over there waiting for you in the... In the dark, dark recesses of yeah. all of our bullshit that we accumulate there. So, mm-hmm. and uh, does it accumulate? How, <laughs> my, how it does! <laughs> oh, how! Um, a lot of people have been mentioning that because they're in quarantine, um, and they can like listen to stuff that like some people can't listen to, like head head headphone. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> a lot of people. I don't know what's going on with me. A lot of people can't have headphones in at work. And so because they're working from home or because they're like having a break from work or what have you, they are uh, listening to more podcasts and they've like gotten caught up on all of our episodes, which is really cool. Um, 
some people have been re-listening to their favorites, which is fun for me because it like reminds me of like Listen. old stuff that we did. I love that. Shout us out on on our social media and stuff. I know it's not the social media corner, but we're on Instagram at the Haunted Heart Podcast. If you want to like shoot us a story or a tag or whatever, if you're listening to a to an old episode, that's always fun for me. I, I love those posts. I always feel really bad because someone will mention something that like we discussed, and I'm literally I'm like, huh? I'm it's like, a blur. I'm like. Huh. What episode was that? I think you someone should, posted You should go that. back to it and listen to the episode. I really yourself. don't want to. Yeah. I don't I don't do much of that either. I really don't want to. I'm afraid. Of Sometimes what... it's fun. If it's been enough time, like if it's been enough distance between when we recorded it and when I'm listening to it, I can kind of have like that little bit of separation because it's not yeah. me. It's like Caitlin from like a year ago. And I'm like, oh, interesting. What an interesting, but usually it's, it feels like weird and vain to like listen to myself on a podcast. But, yeah. Um, oh, but what I was going to say is that if you are one of those people who have gotten caught up and you have nothing else new to listen to and you're kind of like waiting around for the new episodes every Wednesday and for Netflix and kill uh, on over the weekends, um, you can check us out on Patreon. Our lowest tier is like a dollar a month, and that will still get you access to the bo- – Is will it still get you access? Yeah, girl. Okay. I'm that. like, you gave me a face, and I was like, fuck, am I No, wrong? I was just looking around. Yeah, no, oh, that okay. dollar gets, okay. you, so, gets you in, girl. Yeah, so the lowest tier is like a dollar a month, and then you get access to all of the bonus archived material. So if you, have, if you need shit to listen to, we have shit for you to listen to. Just go to Patreon dot com slash the haunted heart and you can find it there and you don't have to like you know break the bank true yeah. true that yeah but take care of yourself sis mm-hmm. um so that you can take care of other people so i realize that like so it's a very interesting time to have a podcast about the darker topics in life because unfortunately Life has gotten very dark itself. Oh, yeah. Yes, it has. So I'm kind of like, hmm. We, we really, I, I'm kind of like feeling that impulse to like lift people up. But at the same time, what we do here is, is bring people down. <laughs> like, let's be real. We bring people down. What we do here is talk about macabre topics. Um. So this week we're talking about murder. <laughs> you know what though? Um, I, I feel like that I am ready for this because it's just it's just great to hear you tell us a story, and I just really and really 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 lazy today and don't <laughs> want to contribute agreed. anything at all agreed well it says i got it's you. it's your turn i got you so i'm ready and and excited i'm your friendly neighborhood virgo and i'm gonna carry this show today <laughs> god no that's a nightmare that's a stressor <laughs> that's a stressor hmm all right, so this week we are going to talk about a very interesting case um, that maybe mm, we're going to talk about a case, an instance perhaps where uh, things didn't turn out maybe as they seemed, right? Um so first, I want to acknowledge my sources. Um, there's an ABC News article by Kevin Dolock and Adam Seacrest. Seacrest? <laughs> Seacrest? It's literally spelled S-E Christ. And I'm like, mm. Seacrest. Seacrest? C- Is that the one? I got the, the, the little Jewish in there. Seacrest? Maybe. Seacrest. Seacrest. I don't like it. I don't know. I don't anyway. like it. I don't like uh, it. It was a good article, though. And then uh, another article from the Tampa Bay Times uh, by Cheryl Kennedy and John Martin. So those are my sources up front. Boom. Thank you so much. We love journalists. You help me out. I appreciate you. So this is the story of the Florida Lotto murder of Abraham Shakespeare. Hold on. That was a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Fl- first of all, Florida sent me. I'm like, <laughs> whoa. It's true. Florida, yeah. we're going to Florida. Florida. All right. So everyone just mentally prepare yourselves. We're going to Florida right now. We all know how crazy it is. Kind of like how people have like different time zones. There's like there's like a Florida zone. Yeah. Oh, where totally. there's a shift that you have to kind of like run some calculations on, except it's like a mental, emotional sort of shift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Our story begins on November 15th, 2006, when 41-year-old Abraham Lee Shakespeare was working an odd job riding shotgun for a truck driver named Michael Ford, which is the most truck driver name I've ever heard. Wait, his job was to ride shotgun? Uh Uh-huh. That's an actual (laughs) job? Well, I mean, I think he was going to help him, like help the guy like load and unload stuff, but he was... (laughs) <laughs> no, like, his job is to literally just sit there and shoot the shit. Like, I mean, I'm <laughs> like, company. wait, like, <laughs> if I didn't absolutely hate like long haul road trips, like, and also talking to and people, also to, especially well, yeah, people you don't true. know, no, <laughs> talking, no, his job me is not would for be you. fired immediately. You'd They'd be, be like, like a fucking grumpy ass bitch, like you in the passenger seat, just like grumpily staring they, out the window for five hours. They'd be like, so. uh so what what are the things that you like? What do you like? And I'd just be like, oh. Mm. <laughs> I'd just stare out the window. <laughs> just grunt and stare out the window. Oh, God. No, it wouldn't be great. Uh, so just never mind. No. Forget that. No. God. But, I mean, <laughs> hey. All right. So he's riding shotgun. Yes. So he is uh, riding shotgun for a truck driver named Michael Ford on an overnight food route to Miami. Working odd jobs was something that Shakespeare did often to help make ends meet. He was currently working as a part-time garbage man making $8 an hour, but he often picked up odd jobs unloading trucks, washing dishes, and doing day labor. We love a hustler. We do. We do. Yeah. Uh, We have been there. (laughs) After stopping to make deliveries in Lakeland, Florida and Winter Haven, Florida, Ford and Shakespeare stopped in, in at a convenience center Convenience center, conven- convenience what? store. Sorry, I was like what having the a stroke. Fuck? Kind of Karen ass shit a came out of your center. mouth. This is a convenience center, okay? It is not a market. No, I'm struggling because I wrote my notes like in, I, like I wrote my notes in a southern accent for some reason. <laughs> like uh, Ford and Shakespeare stopped in at a convenience store. Like sure. I was just like really, yeah. Anyway, I was trying to correct for. My my convenient. white trashness. <laughs> it just he stopped happen. in at a convenience center. <laughs> at a convenience center. That it's sounds like something that, that would be in like for you. North Dakota. <laughs> like that sounds like something a in North Dakota. Convenience center. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of like how some people say um, make groceries versus like buying groceries. Have you ever heard what? that? Yes, it is an actual thing. Who? I Where? think it's up north. I could be wrong. I think it's north, but I there are people that say instead of I'm going to buy groceries or get groceries, uh-huh. they say I'm going to make groceries. Listen, if you say I'm going to make groceries, send me an email at the haunted heart podcast at gmail.com. I want to know where you're from. I want to know why you say that. I want to know everything about you. Um, I want to study you because <laughs> I've never heard that in my life. Yeah. And that is interesting to me. Yeah. I know um, people from like uh, Philly area, um, they, they'll they say go food shopping. I don't like that. Yeah, we're going to go food shopping. We went I to the, don't like We went that. food shopping. And I'm like, interesting that you would specify. Going food shopping. Going to go food shopping. It's I'm going to go to the grocery store. I mean, that's what I always say. You could say, I'm going to go wrestle it, me some vittles. <laughs> I'm going to go to the dick sucking store. <laughs> That's an old uh, reference. If anyone gets that reference, uh, I fucking love you. I mean, it's amazing. Dwight David Honeycutt. God damn it. And then you gave it away. I mean, if, if somebody's not included in the joke, look up Dwight David Honeycutt for school board office. It's fucking amazing. It's Kenny went in like 40 more years. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe too many. It's you in like 25. 20, 25 <laughs> tops. All right. I'm trying to tell this story. We're having well, too much fun. Well, get along to it. Get, come on. All get. right. After stopping. 
to make deliveries in Lakeland, Florida and Winter Haven, Florida, Ford and Shakespeare stopped in at a convenience store in Frostproof, Florida on their way to Miami to grab drinks and cigarettes for the road. Frostproof, Florida? Yeah, it's funny. It's Okay. It's Some snowbird named it that. Jesus. Frostproof. Uh, Ford got out of the truck and asked Shakespeare if he wanted a soda. Shakespeare declined and instead asked Ford to pick him up two lottery tickets and gave his friend two of the $5 he had on him that day to cover the cost of the lotto tickets. That's an important plot point. Mm, Okay. That's why I read it slow like that, because I'm a podcaster. You're a storyteller. Amazing. (laughs) As fate would have it, when the winning lottery ticket numbers were announced, Abraham Shakespeare's number was called. 6, 12, 13, 34, 42, and 52. As the owner of the winning lottery ticket, Abraham Shakespeare won the $30 million Florida jackpot and elected to receive his prize money via a one-time lump sum cash payment of $17 million. Fuck yeah. Unfortunately for Shakespeare, with riches came immense attention. And just three years later, Shakespeare's number would be called again. Only this time, the results would be fatal. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, queen. No, it's terrible. It's actually quite terrible. I literally thought you were going to be like, only this time his number was up. (laughs) Jesus. Oxygen channel moment for real. Um, Can I just say, though, you keep saying Shakespeare, and I can literally only picture William Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. I I struggled with that at first, too. Full Shakespearean get up, but with like a trucker hat? No. Okay. He he did not look like that. Okay. Um, He he looked like a dude. He looked like a normal dude. A dude? Yeah. He just looked like a normal guy. He didn't look like a trucker either. He, like, that was very much like an odd job that he had just picked up. He was not like, like, about the trucker life, you know? Um, not about that. Uh, he looked like a cool dude. He, life. you know what he lo- he looked like a restaurant dude, you know, like a cook, like like somebody I in the kitchen, those. like I that. That is the vibe those. that he. Okay, yes, I that's know the those. vibe that he. Gave that's me. unfortunate. Like, just kind of like a. But <laughs> <laughs> no, anyone that has worked in a restaurant can tell you cooks are like they nasty. Well, I mean, no, he looked. He looked. He didn't look nasty. He looked. Just like a normal fucking dude. I don't know how to describe. I'm going to show you a picture of him to help you. Okay, please do. <laughs> please do. Because you say, and he's not about that trucker life, and I'm just like thinking to myself, it reminds me of like, you remember back in the day when uh, Von Dutch was a thing? The trucker hats? Yes. You know I had one, right? No. Yes, I did. Do you still have it? No, I don't. God damn it. It was uh, black. I'm going to order one. And it had teal lettering here he is this is after he won his money okay he's in court in a suit but like you know he had dreads he's like a reasonably decent looking dude like he's just living his life he's cool right okay yeah all right all All right right. so in in november 2006 However, Abraham Shakespeare was riding on a wave of optimism regarding the future. Having just received his lottery winnings, he moved out of his working class neighborhood in Lakeland, Florida, and into a gated community. A gated community. A gated community. Listen, talking about that riding on a wave of positivity for the future, don't know her. (laughs) Don't know what that's like, but glad that he got that. (laughs) But he's in a gated community right now. Yes. Okay? Yes. All right. As the, son, as the son of a poor citrus picker and having spent most of his life uh, as a part-time garbage worker, Shakespeare's lottery wins seemed to have catapulted him into a whole other world. His winnings didn't seem to result in extravagant spending on himself, though, as some might expect. Several months after his lottery win, apart from a $1.1 million home, his only other major purchases were a Nissan Ultima and a Rolex watch from a pawn shop. Although there were conflicting reports on this, um, some sources did report uh, additional purchases of a 2006 F-150 pickup truck and a 2007 um, BMW 750i. Okay. But, like, I feel like if you have, like, if you won $17 million and you just bought, like, a couple cars and a Rolex, 
I feel like you're still reasonably. Yeah, I mean, you're still reasonable. That's right. not like, that's not That super doesn't sound crazy. crazy to me. There were a lot of articles that like tried to write this story from a certain angle, which we will talk about. Um, but there are a lot of stories that tried to like, really like drive home extravagant spending Mm. when I don't feel that was the case um, from the research that I did. Anyway. um, So instead of splurging on extravagant purchases for himself, Shakespeare apparently preferred to help others out. Coming from a working class background, he seemed to want to help out his family, friends, and really anyone else who asked for financial support following the receipt of his prize money. First, Shakespeare put a million dollars into a trust fund for his son. He then gave his stepfather a million dollars and then gave each of his three stepsisters $250,000 apiece. He paid off $185,000 of a mortgage for a friend. He paid off 60000 on a mortgage for a man whose last name he didn't even know. And he paid off 53000 on a mortgage for a man out of the neighborhood who he'd, quote, been knowing for a few years, end quote. Hmm. All right. So he's a super generous guy. Yeah. He bought a house for $125,000 near Lake Wales that he had only seen once and rented it to some tenants that he had only met once. He gave his brother's son's best friend $40,000. He gave his mother $12,000 and his sister $10,000. He wrote Wachovia cashier's checks to his friends. He paid for funerals. It became common knowledge around town that Shakespeare was the man to go to if you had a money problem. Three months after he bought his new home, Shakespeare was sued by Michael Ford. Oh. The truck driver. mm. So um, Michael Ford said that Shakespeare had asked and paid uh, to buy his, or sorry, Michael Ford said that he had paid for the winning lottery tickets at the convenience store um, the day that Shakespeare reportedly got lucky. Um, Ford approached Shakespeare demanding a share of the jackpot no less than $1 million, and when Shakespeare refused to pay, uh, Ford sued Shakespeare and alleged that Shakespeare stole the lottery tickets out of Ford's wallet. Uh, mm, yeah. Shady ass. Yeah. So he basically wanted a cut of the money. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Right. Because, I mean, his story was very, like, first it was that he had paid for it, and then it was that, like, he had actually paid for it and bought them for himself, and Shakespeare had taken them out of his wallet. Like, there was just a lot. Right, um, right, right. Why right. would you be trying to settle for $1 million I if it was actually your shit ticket? like that. Yeah. Like... Yeah. Anyway, so the jury also hated it, and they didn't believe him. Um, so Shakespeare prevailed in the courts. But the appeals process for that trial was actually dragging on because Michael Ford was, like, not backing down. So he kept, he kept wanting to appeal it. Yes. Because he just is that big of a fucking dick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Jim Valenti, Shakespeare's appellate attorney, said that the first time he met Shakespeare, a meeting that is supposed to be fairly private since these conversations between clients and attorneys usually deal with critical details of the trial, there were 10 people in the room. Uh, Valenti said of this, advisors, friends, I'm not sure who they all were. He wouldn't say how much of Shakespeare's winning uh, or lottery winnings were left by the time he met Shakespeare during that appeals process, but he did say that it was really sad. Valenti went on to say, quote, I'm not sure by whom, but I think he'd been taken advantage of. He was a man who was very weary by the time he got to me. I wonder if Abraham wouldn't say he would like to go back to the day before he won that money, end quote. Shakespeare's last appeals hearing was May 27th, but he didn't show. May 27th of 2009, that is. So in November 2009, Abraham Shakespeare's family officially reported him missing, although he hadn't been seen since April of that year. Missing posters went up next to Shakespeare's regular hangouts, describing him as 6 foot, 5 inches, 190 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. A reward for $5,000 was announced. Eddie Dixon, a self-reported friend of Shakespeare's, told police, quote, Only thing I know is that's my best friend. Y'all need to go ask that white woman where that man at. End quote. 
Now, the white woman that Eddie was referring to was Doris Donegan Moore, Shakespeare's business partner, who went by the nickname Dee Dee. 37 years old at the time, Dee Dee was living in Shakespeare's house because the house was owned by American Medical Professionals, a company that she established in conjunction with Shakespeare. Dee Dee, or rather her company, was also the owner of all Shakespeare's various real estate holdings and other assets as well. And since Shakespeare had disappeared, Dee Dee was the sole owner of American Medical Professionals and the sole owner of nearly all of Shakespeare's estate. Mm. Naturally. Well. You, you know, go ahead and say it. You know what I'm going to say. You can go ahead and say and it. It's in my script. You just say it. Suspicious. 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 Agreed. So naturally this made Dee Dee rather. Huh? This naturally this made Dee Dee rather. Uh. I don't know what you want me to say. Suspicious. Suspicious. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was like, what rather, rather what? I don't know how it made her. Ah, it made her rather suspicious. She was suspicious. Yes, and instead of ignoring her culpability, she chose to meet police's suspicion with answers. Dee Dee told the local newspaper in Lakeland that she helped Shakespeare disappear at his request. That's what he wanted, she said, because he was falling behind on child support again with a second son born a little more than a year ago, a year before his disappearance, that is, to a much younger woman. And because he was so tired of people continuing to bug him for money that he no longer had. Quote, he intentionally did not want to be found, she told the paper. He didn't care what it took. End quote. Hmm. Okay. Okay, D.D. Right. <laughs> Dee Dee. All right, Dee Dee. First of all, <laughs> let me just. That name in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It's very Dexter's Lab. <laughs> like, it's very. It's taken me. It's taken me to that place. I have a great aunt whose name is Dee Dee. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I do. Mm -hmm. um, it's just. Okay. <laughs> I'm just not trying to offend anyone who's new, who goes by Dee Dee. It's fine. But, we love I mean, Dee Dee's. I have a second cousin whose name is Dee Dee, and I love her. She's a beautiful woman. All right. Uh, this Dee Dee, though, was not. She's not a good Dee Dee. Not a good Dee Dee. She not. Mm -mm. Um, she had met Shakespeare barely more than a year prior to him being reported missing at an annual small business conference in November 2008 in Kissimmee, Florida. Now, let me tell you, if that doesn't sound like a party, the annual small business conference in Kissimmee, Florida. Yes, queen. I so, want to be there. We're technically a small business. I don't know that it sounds like a party, but I, I want to embrace it. I feel like hmm. I feel like it's at like a Holiday Inn and Sweet. Uh, definitely, it's at <laughs> a, a Holiday, Holiday Inn yep. Express. It's maybe. probably <laughs> it, if if that, but most definitely a Ramada Inn, <laughs> a Marriott, <laughs> a Ramada Inn. <laughs> <laughs> With me. like a really tiny little like conference room, <laughs> room area. It's good. it's good. They're selling. I, they're serving like the veggie tray with ranch, like the raw veggies with ranch. It's a veggie tray with ranch mm -hmm. that someone named Margaret, who is a volunteer organizer, who's yes. really into it. Somebody made lunch meat roll ups. Uh huh. And they're like really, really. There's definitely. They really want you to drive. And there's definitely a crock pot there with some like 100%. little weenies in it. Mm -hmm. Um and. There has to be at least one Mary Kay representative there. Mm -hmm. Gotta be. <laughs> or or an Avon lady. Yeah. Maybe both. Probably. Maybe both and they're like at opposing corners of the room. Oh yeah. Just to spice things up. They're 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 looking at each other. They don't like each other. Mm hmm Um and the Avon lady has her free samples that she's mm -hmm. handing out. And, like and the Mary Kay baggy. lady's really mad about it because she didn't bring any free samples. 
and she feels like off about it like she yeah. probably has like a pamphlet or, she's like, probably a going through a lot though like yeah. her husband used to bag them for her but now they're divorced uh-huh. and like she's she didn't upset. have time she's lost the kids because she is also an alcoholic on the slide and there's just really a lot going uh-huh. on for her she's she, struggling it's a it's a difficult time she didn't have time she's like listen this is just a chicken shit gig i'm just here <laughs> I'm just here. I'm trying to get over this. I'm just going to grab a few of these fucking (laughs) cucumber sandwiches, put them in my bag, and I'm going to be out. Wait, am I talking about us at a fucking conference? I feel like I feel like I'm. I feel like we are writing the story of my life. I feel like I'm identifying with this Mary Kay lady too much. (laughs) Look, this is a chicken shit gig. Oh, God. All right. (laughs) Anyway, small business conference. It's all the rage. You gotta opt in. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, at this particular small business conference, this is this is not a fortuitous one uh, in in November 2008 in Kissimmee, Florida, because that is where um, that is where. Dee Dee Moore met Barbara Jackson, who was the realtor who had sold Abraham Shakespeare his house on Red Hawk Bend. Now, Jackson, the realtor lady, said of Dee Dee Moore, quote, when I met her, she was in a wheelchair. She said she had been in a car accident. She wheeled right up beside me and we started talking, which is <laughs> I just... <can't. laughs> I was like, Barbara... <laughs> She wheeled right up beside me, and we started talking. <laughs> it, I'm I'm going to make the assumption that our DD is not like actually wheelchair bound. Yes, she's not. Okay. Um, she. D- no. So one, your DD, that's fucked up. Oh, we're gonna dig into it for sure. Um. So I'm just putting that out right there. I don't yeah. like you, Dee Dee. Yeah. How very Ted Bundy of you to like <laughs> to impersonate a handicapped person. Right. For sympathy and trust from people. Yeah. That's why you never trust nobody. Honestly. That's how you live your life. <laughs> um Barbara Jackson, by the way, love her. Um unfortunate Look role that she name. plays in this but i literally cannot read any of her quotes without slipping into a very heavy southern accent so sorry in advance for that barbara jackson she just is real estate yeah you know she's got a banging headshot 100 percent. you, you know, know that she's got that hair feathered back hair honey. is fat listen hair is feathered her lips are on her fucking eyeliner is on you know she's suit. got the powder the rouge 100 percent. she's got that going on yes she probably has that suit. like she probably has that uh what year were rouge. we in 2006 2008 2008 okay so she probably she has probably like a blazer <laughs> yeah and she's probably definitely got a blazer but it's not black it's like it's a fun, fun color. It's a fun color yeah. because she researched it for a little bit and knows that like, hey, if I want my headshot to pop, I need like a color. So it's probably like like a pink. It's or a probably purple. a pink. She's a female business owner. Pink or purple. Yeah. Maybe. But she's in Florida though, so maybe like a lime green or like a a bright yellow. I could see that on Barbara. Mm, okay. I'm gonna I've actually, never seen a photograph of Barbara. You by continue. The way. I've got research to do. <laughs> So, uh, Dee Dee Moore uh, meets Barbara Jackson at this uh, conference, and she was basically part of a group of people that Jackson told about Shakespeare and how he had changed her views on money. It's not about money at all, Jackson said. It's about helping people. Dee Dee told Jackson that she was a writer and that she wanted to do a story on her and Shakespeare, maybe even a book. Jackson set up a meeting, and the three of them got together in Lakeland. Now, when she came to the house, Jackson said, quote, she jumped out of a Hummer walking, and she was on heels. She on said heels? She, she was walking, and she was on heels. She said she healed herself through scuba therapy. <laughs> it wasn't even two weeks after scuba the therapy? small business conference. Yes. Scuba therapy. Scuba therapy. Scuba therapy. 
Girl, I'm going to tell you what. If scuba therapy healed your legs and got you walking again, I where do I sign up? Please, like, can you, can scuba therapy heal me? I want to know. <laughs> I, I if if that is the case, I will show up to that conference, notebook in hand. The scuba therapy conference. The scuba therapy conference. Yes, I will. I'm not even really sure that scuba therapy is a thing. Because here's the thing. What about to it? do scuba yeah. uh-huh. diving? Like like to go actual. So there's like snorkeling, which is for like uh-huh. fucking tourists and shit. But like to actually go scuba diving. Like there's actual classes that you yeah have you have to, to have take. classes yeah like you have to you have to fucking study. I mean you don't have to like. I think it's like six weeks or eight weeks or whatever, yeah. but you have to like take a class, sometimes several classes to like get a certification yeah. to to do that. Because otherwise you get like the rickets. I don't think they do it for therapy. <laughs> like I don't think that, I don't think I those would, two things go together. I would go down there for therapy and get an air bubble in my fucking veins. Oh my and God. And just, <laughs> yeah. I'd be dead and it's be like, oh wow. The other, the other attendees look over and they're like, wow, he's so relaxed. <laughs> And I'm just there, like, floating dead in the fucking ocean. <laughs> Damn fish is, like, starting to nibble on me right now. And I'm, Hey, you be chill. <laughs> be really chill. I'd still sign up. <laughs> yeah. So scuba therapy, she healed herself. Also not great, because if you have, like, body issues trying to get into a fucking, like, scuba suit. It would suit, never happen for me. That's going to cause another, not ever. another type of therapy. Mm-hmm. If I have to look at myself in a wetsuit. It is. That's another type of therapy. To be to honest to. with you, though, I think once we get the wetsuit on, it's going to everything in. Mm. So I think once it's on, mm. we're great. But mm. if you've ever tried to, and I know you haven't necessarily had this exact experience, but there's a certain experience um, that women understand um, where you are trying to either put on or take off a sweaty sports bra. And that is just, that's what I imagine putting on a wetsuit would be. But like all over. Ugh. And it's its just not, it's just not what you need. No. It's not what you need. No. So anyway, uh, following that meeting, that first meeting at Abraham Shakespeare's house of Dee Dee, Barbara Jackson, uh, and Shakespeare, of course, Dee Dee took several decisive actions. On January 9th, she bought Shakespeare's house, the one that he had bought for $1.1 million, for $655,000. On February 9th, she became the primary manager of Abraham Shakespeare LLC, taking over his affairs and buying the debts people owed him, meaning that the people who owed Shakespeare money, and it was eight people in total that she had bought their debt, Mm -hmm. Uh, which totaled almost $600,000, now owed that money to her. On February 13th, Dee Dee got divorced, ending a 17-year marriage to a man with a fill dirt company. A fill dirt company? A fill dirt company. So So he had his own business. He did. He was an entrepreneur. He was was filling dirt. Yeah. I reckon he was going around filling holes with dirt. Listen, we love a man that can fill holes. We do. And um, why you leave him, Dee Dee? I don't know. Very suspicious. Very, yeah, very, uh, huh. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that's happening, it's like, huh. One right after the other, mm-hmm. isn't it, Dee Dee? It's too much. You're doing too much. So naturally, Dee Dee's quick actions to uh, closely associate herself with Shakespeare made her a suspicious character. A prime subject. But what was even more interesting to police was Dee Dee's history. Turns out, she had a criminal record. Oh, she had a rap. In 2001... Dee Dee drove the new $36,000 Lincoln Navigator on which she owed $46,000 and parked it in a garage in Pasco County. She got an accomplice to tie her up, take her to Wamama, which by the way, I've never been to Wamama, but it's on the top of my list now. (laughs) Is that in Florida? I think, yes. Wamama. 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 Uh, She got an accomplice to tie her up, take her to Wamama, and throw her in a ditch. Then... (laughs) 
Was that Which, therapy? Honestly, was that honestly, therapy? Honestly, parts of that sound like it could just be a Saturday night, girl. <laughs> I mean, but I'm like, we hey, just need to leave the law out of it. I just feel like, Dee Dee, you need to just like tell me. She'll tell you where to go for the best time, right? <laughs> The scuba shit. She's. If you want to be tied up, thrown in a ditch, it sounds great to be honestly. I'm I there. Mean, like, I'm let's there just until you throw me in the ditch. I'm just not. I mean, what if the field dirt man comes along? Shit. I feel like the field dirt man would save you though, and then He's you not would like save her. They I got like, divorced. Oh, he that's right. But I'm thinking her. if it was you, <laughs> and it was me. I'm just thinking, like, if it wasn't you, if it wasn't Dee Dee, uh-huh. and he came in, I feel like he would save you. And then, you know, depending on how things went, you might, you know. <laughs> Be Miss Phil Dirt? <laughs> Be Miss Phil. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, like, in a ditch, hair oh looking God. a fucking mess, and I just, like, look up like an angel from heaven and say, I hear you go around filling holes. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Phil Dirts. <laughs> Woo, that one sent you. Really good one. That one sent me off the edge, girl. Right off the edge into that ditch. All right. Continue. Okay. So, um, <laughs> here. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Go. You're really go, struggling. Go. So, yes, yeah, so Dee Dee hired these people, hired an accomplice to tie her up, take her to Wamama, throw her in a ditch. And then she told a passerby who stopped to help that she had been raped at gunpoint by three Hispanic men who stole her navigator. Now, I don't even know why. What the you fuck? You got to be bringing race into all what this. You, what the fuck? Fuck. Yeah. So she had to break in and say that these were three Hispanic men. Yes. Meanwhile, there are probably three Hispanic men just living fucking their chilling. lives, yeah. chilling. Yeah. And now you've been placed a fucking target yes. on their heads because yes. that's how things work around here with your fucking privilege, you fucking bitch. Yeah, which is fucked up. Yeah. So um, I hate shit like that. I hate shit like that because it tells me that like she felt like it would be more believable of a oh, lie. Oh, a thousand percent. If she told people that three hispanic uh-huh. men uh-huh. have done that as opposed to like any like like three white dudes mm-hmm. yeah just three dudes yeah, yeah. but she it's deny it she denied that'd be why she said it so uh she was subsequently convicted of insurance fraud and falsely reporting a crime for that and oh, she got good. a year of probation good um so naturally that cast an air of suspicion upon her you think so in fall of 2009, as rumors about Shakespeare's disappearance began to circulate around Lakeland, Dee Dee told different, three different Ledger reporters that she could set up an interview with him. It never happened. She told Shakespeare's mother that she could set up a meeting with him. It never happened again. I'm sorry. I, if I was his... Why do I have to go through you right. to get to my own fucking son? Right. Like, I'm sorry. Who are you? Who are you, Dee Dee? Yeah. No. So sadly, in January of 2010, 43-year-old Abraham Shakespeare's remains were found buried underneath five feet of dirt under a slab of cement in Dee Dee's boyfriend's backyard. God damn it. Authorities say he was shot twice in the chest by a 38 caliber pistol sometime in April 2009. Naturally, Dee Dee Moore continued to be police's top suspect. More and more evidence turned up throughout the investigation, all of it pointing to Dee Dee's guilt. Polk County authorities claim that she offered someone a $200,000 house in exchange for reporting a false sighting of Shakespeare after his death, reportedly. She allegedly also sent Shakespeare's son 5000 in cash for his birthday and also used Shakespeare's cell phone to text messages to various individuals that were purportedly from him. Mm. During the trial... Jurors also watched a Walmart surveillance video that the prosecution argued links more to Shakespeare's killing. The footage shows Dee Dee Moore making a $104 cash purchase of gloves, duct tape, plastic sheeting, and other items detectives later found close to where Shakespeare's body was buried. Again, a little suspicious. 
Jurors hearing the case also heard a rambling two-page letter that witnessed Greg Smith, a police informant who was also a former friend of Shakespeare and a supposed friend of Dee Dee Moore, says Moore allegedly forged while at a Comfort Inn and Suites in Lakeland, Florida. The letter was meant to appear to be from Shakespeare, prosecutors said. They say that the letter was a ruse to convince Shakespeare's mother that he was still alive. Moore attempted to cover her tracks while it was written, according to prosecutors. On December 12th, 2012, or sorry, December 10th, 2012, due to a mountain of evidence of her guilt, Dee Dee Moore was found guilty in a Tampa court of first-degree murder and other charges. She declined to take the stand in her own defense, and in fact, the defense rested without calling a single witness. Jurors deliberated for more than three hours before delivering their verdict, which to me... Seems a little long. You know? I was gonna say. I don't I mean. What were y'all? Did y'all have lunch in between? Were they pushing like, for the lunch break? Like, did you have a lunch break? What's going on? Uh, especially with all that fucking evidence. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the murder charge, Moore was also found guilty of possessing and discharging a firearm, resulting in death. Moore was sentenced to life in prison without parole. And at the sentencing, Judge Emmett Battles told DG, D.D. Moore. Quote, Abraham Shakespeare was your prey and your victim. Money was the root of evil you brought to Abraham. You are sentenced to life in prison and you shall not be eligible for parole. End quote. Good. But there is a little bit of good news at the end of the story. Antoinette Andrews, Abraham Shakespeare's mother, who had imbued her son with a penchant for playing the lottery, apparently never gave up the practice herself. Unbelievably, on Thursday, June 8th, 2017, Miss Andrews won $1 million on a $20 scratch-off Florida lottery ticket she bought at a Circle K. Aww. At last report, she planned to use the funds to move out of her neighborhood and continue to care for Shakespeare's youngest son. Mm, that's sweet. Yeah. And that is the story of the Florida Lotto murder of Abraham Shakespeare. Yeah, it's always one of those things where it's like, <clears throat> you know, like what would you do if you won the lottery, right? Yeah. And like what would you do if one day you woke up and you realized that you all of a sudden just had like, you know, a vast sum of money? And I think, you know, the answers are different for certain people, but – um. I think in Abraham's case, like, and I hate to say this, but the fact that he was so giving, I feel like, you know, worked against him in the end, almost. Yeah. it's and So it, one of the reasons that I picked this case is because it kind of, like, weirdly connects my, like, normal people day job life with my... Murder obsession. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, or my true crime obsession. If my you will. murder obsession. But um, I study financial therapy. I work in financial therapy and behavioral coaching and all sorts of things like that. And it's not uncommon at all to see people who suddenly, we call them sudden windfalls, um, where they receive large sums of money in a, like one sudden event, right? An inheritance, winning the lottery, what have you. Mm -hmm. And suddenly this person who, you know, had grown up the son of a poor fruit picker who had had, you know, working class odd jobs his entire adult life, had never really had a lot of money. Now he suddenly has $17 million. That's just his, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And there's a lot that goes into that. You know, often when you hear people talk about how unfortunate lottery winners can be, because it happens a lot, um, people talk about like, oh, well, they, they didn't really know how to manage money. But it's not really a case of not knowing how to manage money so much as it's a case of the emotional fallout from that sudden windfall. You might think that, you know, getting $17 million out of the blue would be an amazing thing, which it would. But there's a lot of like emotional baggage that comes with that. Everyone that Abraham Shakespeare knew in his life was part of that working class background that he had grown up in. Mm -hmm. So while he suddenly now has $17 million, everybody around him is the same. 
And there is, there's a lot of issues of guilt when it comes to sudden windfalls. And there's a lot of issues of, a lot of times people with that background carry a guilt for having won all this money or for having gotten all of this money. Mm -hmm. Um, And in order to kind of soothe that guilt, they sort of start giving it away, right? Because they don't really feel like they deserve it. And so they just kind of give and they give and they give and maybe they spend until they're they're kind of brought down to a place that's a little bit more normal, right? Because seventeen million dollars is like crazy, right? For him, given his you know whole background, and so if he kind of distributes some of that, then he doesn't have as much. It's kind of like the story of the rainbow fish, actually, if you think about it. He just kept giving away his scales, except his scales were money. Um, and it, it does become an issue because then you have issues of like financial dependency and financial mm-hmm. enabling the people around you. And once you start enabling people financially, then they become more and more dependent on you. And it really doesn't benefit anybody. But like, I think that that is what's going on in this case, which was one of the things that was most frustrating to me is because everybody who was telling this story wanted to tell it from a perspective of this dude who never had any money and like wasn't college educated, didn't know what to do, and then he won the lottery, and then he spent all his money like an idiot, and then he got murdered, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was this narrative that everybody wanted to push. And it was so frustrating to me, because it it wasn't that, you know? Yeah. And I think that like, when you come up, when you grow up in, in like, certain areas, and then communities and families that, uh, are poor a lot of it is like a community you know and so you kind of feel like if you have this money then it's not just yours you know what I mean you kind of feel like you owe something to you know your mother or your brothers your family you know the people that were there for you when Mm -hmm. you know maybe you didn't have anything and then they did or whatever so I can see like it can be like you said really really emotional um because you all of a sudden have this like weight to bear Mm -hmm. over like all right you know now i can a you have so many decisions that you can make right and what to do with this with this money and trying to figure out what is what is right and what is also like right for you yeah or what you feel is right and what is right for you um so yeah Yeah, it's it's very difficult as somebody with the with the background that i have and working with people around issues like this it 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 was really heartbreaking to research this case because it it was not a case of somebody who was just being irresponsible to me. It doesn't read like a case. You know, there are a lot of articles that you can find online that talk about how he was buying Rolexes and he was buying cars and he was blowing money on everybody and he was trying to be a ladies man and blah, 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 blah. And like, whatever. Like, I mean, some of that may be true, but my, from everything that I've researched, it doesn't sound like that was the case. It sounds like this guy had a big heart and he wanted to, do good for people and Mm -hmm. he wanted to help people and that's why he paid off people's mortgages and he you know sort of over compensated for the fact that he had had this you know crazy thing of winning 17 million dollars happen to him um technically 30 million dollars before taxes but yeah so it, it just it was very difficult researching this particular case because I feel like if he had had somebody there some some person there to kind of protect him a little bit more emotionally and and help him work through some of those issues and the issues of guilt that come along with that um that maybe it could have been a different um outcome and then of course with trusting somebody like Dee Dee Moore who is clearly just there to swindle you out of whatever she can right I mean yeah, uh, so it's very, very difficult. But, um, I mean, it does have that really nice, uh, happy ending, you know, with his mother, 
you know. Yeah, how crazy is that? That like, she that she winning, would have also won a million dollars. Won a million dollars and is able to, you know, do better for herself and for his kid too. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's great. And we love that. Hell yeah. So Yeah. That was um that was a really good story. Yeah, it was an interesting one. I uh I wanted to tell the story and I wanted to tell it right because I think a lot of a lot of sources have not done so. A mm-hmm. lot of sources have been very uh very yuppie white white collar with that story. Yeah, and I I I'm happy that you know, Dee Dee is she's in jail and the judge was like <laughs> Yeah. No, no parole for Fuck you. Fuck off, bitch. girl. And you know her ex husband is like just driving in his pickup truck right now with the windows down and the hair the the breeze blowing through well, that's his the three thing. hairs all right, all right. on top of his mullet laden hair. So that was one thing that I was did they didn't find that he had a part in that because he no. was covered like I was thinking because he was buried in his backyard and that well i mean (laughs) listen this is me as a fucking detective it wasn't it wasn't in his (laughs) backyard though it was in her boyfriend oh okay so her boyfriends yeah i was thinking that it was his backyard no 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 no. and that he was covered and i was like "Mm, no suspicious she, she like when she met abraham shakespeare and was doing all of that stuff of like you know, having him sign his house over to ownership by their company or whatever. Yeah. Like she, that's when she divorced that husband of 17 years. Got and then it. I guess she got, got with the boyfriend at some point after that. Got it. She and was no that. longer Mrs. Phil. Dirt. No, I don't believe that of our Phil Dirt man. I think our Phil Dirt man, I think, I think that he is no. I think he was just. happy. I think he was like, thank God. I think he's a good man. I hope that he, look, hope. listen, if you are a single lady in Florida, maybe look out for him. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's a good man. But no, I didn't hear anything about her boyfriend. And clearly, like, I'm sure he must have served some kind of or time. Or helped or something. I don't think that you just, like, I don't think that they just, like, find a body on your property did, did, and you I, just get away. I don't know away. that Dee Dee would be the one to bury him, first of all. Yeah. Dee Dee doesn't sound like someone who is in to the dirt. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, she, I guess she was, though, because she, she was married to that Phil mm, Dirt man for 17 but, years. True, true. But, I mean, she just doesn't seem, she don't seem the type to want to get her, like, her hands dirty. Mm, like, maybe. Like, actually. Maybe. I don't know. Suspect. Anyway. Yeah. Um, well, I want to close this off with a review. A review? We had someone uh, go to their, uh, to their app. In this case, it was the, uh. The fucking Apple podcast app. We love it. And they left us a review. Thank God. <laughs> um, so the subject line is love the trash fire. Mm, mm-hmm. So we already know it's going to be good. Whew. Okay. It's, it's the vibe. <laughs> All right. Um, and this was by uh, someone with the handle, the original soulless ginger. Got it. Okay. And they said, I am one of those quote motherfuckers. <laughs> i am one of those motherfuckers who have been listening for a long time without rating or leaving a review you bastard (laughs) god bless you god God bless you and love you and keep you it would have stayed that way (laughs) it would have stayed that way if you guys hadn't discussed going scripted for the introduction oh period oh. Oh, oh hold on hold on hold on Amazing. It would have stayed that way if you guys hadn't discussed going scripted for the introduction. Period. So, period. <laughs> I love this vibe. Like this energy that's that's coming off this fucking review. I love it. I love it. I live for it. I'm 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 here. I'm going to beg you guys to never do anything scripted. I love the trash fire. Exclamation, 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 exclamation. My husband listens to these dry, scripted, true crime podcasts, and it's like pulling teeth for me. Stay real the way you are. It's perfect. Did I mention I love the show? Smiley face with teeth. 
Amazing. (laughs) (laughs) So. I love that. I love the vaguely um, threatening air of that. (laughs) Glad we didn't. (laughs) Yeah, vaguely threatening. Um, Glad we didn't start this show scripted. Uh, Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Very glad. I just love that my favorite part was the period. So. Period. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So. Yeah. It was good. I'm going to beg you guys to not be scripted. Um, Listen. That's a lot of work. Listen. And we don't want to do that much work. (laughs) There was never any worry about us going scripted. Hands down. Just know that, soulless ginger. You never had to fear. Understand that there is not a chance we could get our shit together enough to do that. If there is one thing, if you are new to this show and this is your first episode listening, you need to listen. If you haven't listened to anything... Throughout this whole episode, you listen to this right now. We are fucking trash. We are tired. (laughs) We have mental illness. (laughs) We have stress. And we do this for the fucking fun of it. Yeah. The moment that this thing begins to feel scripted or like... Anything resembling a fucking nine to five job. Yeah. You won't hear from us. <laughs> you won't. And that's on period. <laughs> and it's happened. It's true. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> that's true. Thank you so much, Soulless Ginger, we for appreciate your it. for your uh candor. We truly we do. I love, love that. that. I write me more. Please write me. I'm not really sure if this is like if this is like tapping into that whole like that whole like submissive whole vibe world. or whatever, but like please write me more reviews yelling at me. <laughs> As long as you put I want a five more, star with yeah, it, you I w- can yell at me all you want. Right. I want more positive reviews that are filled with vitriol like that. Well, like, listen, I love that vibe. You That's heard it amazing. from her, folks. If you, it, let me tell you what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw down the gauntlet. If you think you can match or surpass that commentary, leave us that motherfucking review. Yeah. Do and it. And we'll read it on the air. Do it. Just like I we love did. reviews. I And especially when they're fun like that one. That one was Yeah. Fun. That, that was, was awesome. Fun. I like to be yelled at sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you by do. our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think it's time for for social Sally corner. This is when everyone drops off. It is. So, um, have a have so if a great you're some evening. of our usuals that drop off at this point, bye. We love you. Get the fuck out. Um, party's over. <laughs> party's over for you. But I mean, honestly, like I. I would. I kind of think you guys should stay because I love our fucking outros, <laughs> and I think they're great. And I think that if you miss the outro, then I mean you're missing a part of the heart of the show. So, you know, it's okay if you don't, but just know that I'm disappointed. They're already gone. They're already <laughs> gone. <laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> They've left the building. Anyway, if you're still here and you aren't following us on social media, definitely do that. We're on Instagram at The Haunted Heart Podcast. We're on Twitter at The Haunted Heart. Uh, we are also on Facebook. If you search The Haunted Heart Podcast, you can like our page. We would very much appreciate it if you did. And you can actually leave a review on our Facebook page if you want. You can recommend us is what Facebook calls it. Mm-hmm. And we would love that. Uh, we also have a closed Facebook group, which is where most of the haunted happenings are going down if you search the haunted heart podcast you will find both the page and the group it is a closed group and that's for the privacy of our members we kind of want to keep it a little bit more of a of a vip club type vibe going on um so we will be checking ids at the door but don't worry if you do request to join either kenny myself or a member of our murder mod squad will approve you to join unless you are um a scuba therapy instructor, and then we have a couple words. There are some further like questions that you need to answer before right. we will allow you to enter. We're not Isn't saying it, that we won't let right, you in, but right. like there's, you know, it's kind of like when you're going through TSA. We're going right. to take you into that back room, and we're going to have a good time. We're poke around a little bit. We need, we just need to do a little bit of searching. Um, there's an additional level of screening, um, but you um, are not necessarily banned. Yeah, at this time. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then, like we mentioned at the top of the show, you can always find us on patreon.com slash the haunted heart. If you're at home and you're bored and you need something to listen to, there's a ton of stuff over on Patreon. There's going to be more as we continue to post things over there. So, um, like I said, uh, make sure that you're taking care of yourself and your family first. Um, but there is a whole lot of, uh, of extra shit over there if you've listened to all the regular shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it for the show, folks. That's We're done. It. I think Katie has swept the floor. I have. Uh, and it is clean. I mopped it, put a little bit of pine salt in the water, girl. She She's smelling fresh. Straight up mommy dearest that shit. <laughs> um, we are not mad at you. We are mad at formerly known as Mrs. Fildert. Um, <laughs> so until next week, folks. You might be at home, stuck in your house, on a quarantine, but we want you to embrace the freedom of a man with a Fildert company riding those open roads of southern Florida with the wind blowing through his mullet and embracing in his heart the freedom that comes with his second divorce. And while you embrace that freedom, you have got to stay spooky.